It's pretty crazy how far people are going to go for an adrenaline rush. No wonder there are so many random extreme sports today. Honestly, though, I feel like some of them have no purpose other than getting people to test their boundaries and see if they're able to survive another day. One thing I know for sure is that extreme sports are not for everyone, but some people can never have enough thrilling experiences. First, we start with limbo skating, which honestly sounds like a video game activity. It does sound weird, kind of like doing your roller skates in a split pose. But, you know, by doing that, you'd be ready to practice limbo skating. This extreme sport is hugely popular over in India. And if you think that roller skating while doing splits is already hard enough, wait until you hear this. People usually do this while passing underneath cars or low bars. Yep, explains the limbo part pretty easily, and it's pretty much like doing the limbo dance, but on roller skates in a very demanding and quite dangerous situation. Also, the person responsible for the longest limbo skating stunt was G. Divisri Prasad in India in the year 2017. This person skated for 184 meters, or 603.67 feet. Sure, if you were to simply walk that distance, it wouldn't be any big deal. But if your legs are on the splits while on roller skates, then being able to move more than just 5 meters is already a miracle in itself. So doing 184 sounds simply insane. I guess G. Divisri practiced for a long time to get this far, with pretty good results. Now let's go back to the basics, and this includes surfing. This one is already considered an extreme sport by many of you. Holding your balance while a wave carries you at high speeds is quite challenging, but imagine what would happen if that wave was four to five times bigger than you. Would you go for it? That'd be considered big wave surfing in that case, and only the bravest souls on earth dare to try such a thing. It is considered to be one of the deadliest water sports since there are plenty of hazards, including the possibility of getting drowned, pulled into the water, or get destroyed by one of those big rocks underwater. And just the water itself can cause a lot of problems as well. The water pressure at a depth beyond 12 meters is strong enough to harm your eardrums. So basically, you might want to get used to regular ways before you try these monsters. Another extreme sport that is widely popular for some reason, bungee jumping. I'm sure all of you know about it, and I guess it's safe to say that many of you have tried this already. Or perhaps you have a friend who's tried it and has told you about it, or you've just seen the copious amounts of it on YouTube. Either way, it's been on the list of extreme sports for quite some time now, and it's something that can be practiced in almost every corner of the world. However, crocodile bungee jumping? Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's something else there. However, where exactly can you practice this dangerous sport? Well, there are probably quite a few places that do it, but you shouldn't be surprised to know that Australia and some parts of Africa are among the most popular spots for this. And also, they've been the scenario to some of the most tragic crocodile bungee jumping experiences to date. Unfortunately, some people's cords have snapped, which made them fall into the croc-infested waters. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't think I need to tell you how that went. You know what else makes you fly in the air, though? Or at least gives us that impression? Creaking! No, not creaking like the sound effect, creaking with a double E. This sport is the alternative for any adrenaline junkie who can't get that rush from regular canoeing or kayaking. Creaking is difficult, and it requires people to jump off steep waterfalls while being inside some special kayaks that can resist the harsh environment. What makes this particular sport so dangerous and extreme is that anyone on these kayaks could potentially crash against the rocks or be pulled in by the current. So, if you want a nice and relaxing river cruise, then this is not the sport for you. But if you're ready for an adrenaline rush, then by all means, go and try creaking. Just please don't crash. A sport very close to a lot of our hearts, and also speaking of avoiding crashes, how about we get on a BMX bike for a quick race? But not so fast. Racing on one of these bikes is one of the most heart-racing activities you'll ever experience, bar none. Races usually start with about eight racers and a dirt race course full of jumps and a rewarding finish line. They use fast, hard, and dangerous as the words to describe this sport. Pretty apt descriptors, really. Sometimes, though, BMX cyclists throw their bikes in the air to do stunts that require a lot of skill. In a way, you could say that BMX racing is something similar to going on a roller coaster. 
I say it's like a roller coaster, but there isn't a seatbelt to keep you safe or any park authorities to blame if something bad happens to you. One of the most famous racers is one Corey Bohan. By the mid-2000s, he was already a legend after he earned three consecutive golds in the X Games from 2004 to 2006, and his skill is not limited to the typical BMX racing tracks. He's as good on concrete as he is on the dirt roads. If you're an adrenaline junkie, then you've probably tried snowboarding, sandboarding, surfing, and all those sports that require you to get on a board to ride on crazy surfaces. But have you ever heard or tried volcano boarding? It's one of the most violent and challenging sports ever. For this particular sport, people need to wear safety suits and go up an active volcano and then come down by sliding at a high speed. People can choose to stand or sit on their boards, and still, both positions promise a thrilling ride. One of the most popular spots for this sport is the Cerro Negro, an active volcano in the Cordillero de las Maribios, which is a mountain range in Nicaragua. Cerro Negro literally means Black Hill. Its last eruption was in 1999, and the lava that came out of it created some sort of dune that now makes it the ideal spot for people to do volcano boarding. And of course, there's always that one person who takes things to a whole new level. In the early 2000s, someone decided to slide down the volcano by using a mattress. I guess there are always ways to make an extreme sport even more extreme. Oh boy. More than a sport, wing walking is all about defying your fears while being attached to the wings of a plane that's moving as fast as 200 miles per hour. And if flying at high speeds isn't enough, then wait until the plane starts doing tricks. I really don't know how people can manage to do this over and over again. But I guess if you're not afraid of heights and you're okay with standing up on the wings of a plane while being hundreds of feet above the ground, then wing walking might be good for you. One of the most famous wing walkers was Gladys Ingle, who happened to be the only female member of the 13 Black Cats. This was an aerial daredevil stunt troupe that was based in Hollywood. One of the stunts that made her famous was the one in which she changed planes in mid-air without any safety gear. She didn't even have a parachute. She either trusted her skills and years of experience, or she was simply a daredevil. It certainly is easy to feel proud of yourself after practicing rock climbing for the first time, but honestly, that's not as extreme or challenging when you compare it to ice climbing. Just like rock climbing, ice climbing requires you to be agile, strong, and very patient. The one thing that makes ice climbing different is the harsh weather conditions and all the dangers that come with trying to move an icy surface. Usually, this sport is practiced on snow-capped mountains, frozen waterfalls, and other natural structures made of ice. However, an avalanche or some random piece of falling ice could easily get in the way and ruin what would otherwise be a fun experience. That's why ice climbing requires more preparation, and it's not a sport that you can practice whenever you feel like it. And do you want to know who's someone to look up to if you're into ice climbing? Ines Papert. Today, she's 47 years old, and during her life, she's managed to get many ice climbing competition awards while completing some of the most challenging alpine ascents. She even wrote a book in which she explains what it's like to be in her shoes. She's broken many records, and she certainly doesn't give up that easily. She's definitely an inspiration for anyone who dares to try this difficult sport. Most of the sports you've seen today require the use of some harnesses or other pieces of equipment that keeps you, or at least tries to keep you, safe. But this one is a bit different. When you do free solo climbing, you are on your own. No equipment at all. Needless to say, this sport is not for everyone. I know I've said it a lot of times, but for real, free solo climbing is only for those who love mountains and are okay with taking the risks. The use of safety equipment would turn this into a regular climbing session, and that's not so extreme. Free solo climbing requires a lot of strength, but most importantly, it requires complete focus. One wrong move could lead to a strained muscle, a broken bone, frostbites, and in the worst case scenario, death. Now it's time for the day's best pick. The picture I chose for today shows more than just one extreme sport. First, we have a person doing motocross, but if you look in the background, you'll see some people climbing. Both sports are quite extreme, and require people to be brave and take some risks. However, nothing on this picture compares to what I have for you next. Base jumping is when people jump off of any high surfaces and then use a parachute to descend to the ground. It sure does sound safe and fun, but there's always the risk of getting thrashed by the wind. 
At such high heights, you never know what can go wrong, and the injury rate is 43% higher than other sports that require parachutes, and that's why people consider it to be one of the most extreme sports ever created. The word BASE is an acronym, and it stands for Buildings, Antennae, or Radio Mass, Spans, or Bridges, and Earth, which pretty much refers to any cliff. And who came up with that name? Well, it's said that the name was given by Carl Bonish, a filmmaker who loved base jumping and used his skills to document some of the coolest jumps ever. Sadly, though, it was through this sport that Carl lost his life while trying to jump on some cliff in Norway. He was committed to let everyone know about the safest way to jump. But just like any extreme sport, there are always risks when you try to be safe. Now, tell me, which of these sports would you like to try? Have you tried any of them yet? And if so, have you tried them safely? Are there any other extreme sports that deserve to be on this list? Well, let us know in the comment section down below. With all that said and done, that's our video for today, folks, and I will see you all next time. Later, everybody!